Of all the fundamentals in flag football, proper flag pulling is probably the most important. It doesn't matter how many points your team can put on the board if your defense can't pull flags. In this video, we're going to go over proper techniques for pulling flags and common problems players tend to have with pulling flags. Let's break down proper technique first. Step 1. Taking the right angle. Angles are critically important to all areas of football, especially in flag pulling. The first thing is getting to the ball carrier. Teach your players to get in the way. Contact is strictly prohibited in flag football, so the risk of serious collision is very low. The last thing you want to do is go for the ball carrier's side and get behind them. Once you get into chase mode, you've lost the encounter. The key is getting in the runner's path. Don't aim where they are. Aim for where they're going to be. Step 2. Get into the proper position. Once the defender has cut off the ball carrier's path and is within a few yards of them, get into a more athletic stance. Square up with the ball carrier, bend the knees slightly, and get your feet wider. Approach the runner head on so your shoulders are parallel with theirs. Close the gap between the defender and the runner by using short, choppy steps. Don't over pursue, and be prepared to change directions with the runner. Avoid getting behind and chasing if possible. That doesn't mean give up on the play. If you do end up behind, do whatever you can to get to the runner. The ball carrier will now have to find a way around the defender. This means the ball carrier will likely have to slow down, at least a little. If not, they'll now have to move laterally across the field, which means they're momentarily not gaining positive yards. This will buy time for the defender to attempt a proper flag pull. The bent knees and choppy steps will help the defender change directions, stay in the ball carrier's path, and allow for their teammates to close in on the ball carrier using the same technique of heading off their path. Teammates must feed off of each other. When one defender is forcing the runner in a given direction, teammates need to recognize that and box the ball carrier in as a unit. Create a wall of defenders and close them in so they have nowhere to go. Remember to work as a team. It is not a free-for-all. Step 3. Pull the flag. Defenders should do their best to stay square against the runner. In a perfect scenario, the defender will get in front of the ball carrier and in one swift motion grab both of the runner's flags, one in each hand. Grab the flags at the base, right beneath the belt. Grabbing at this point will allow the defender to stay in a better position by remaining more upright. Make aiming easier as the bottom of the flag will likely be swinging all over the place and is harder to grab. It'll give more flag to hold onto if it starts slipping away. Squeeze the flags hard. There are different styles of flag belts, and some, particularly the pop socket types, are difficult to pull. So having a tight grip right away is important. Be sure to practice this grip every time you practice flag pulling. Finally, pull straight down on the flags. Now, you may have noticed I mentioned that in a perfect scenario, the defender will get in front of the ball carrier. That's because, as we all know, there will rarely be a perfect scenario on the field. It's important to teach this technique, but also keep in mind that the runner is actively trying to avoid the defender. So often, the defender will only be able to get a single hand on the flag. Even still, maintain the other techniques as prescribed. They'll still keep the defender in the best position to recover, stay in the play, and make the stop. To recap, Take the correct angle on the ball carrier. Get in the way. Once in the way, square up and use short, choppy steps to close the gap between the defender and the ball carrier. Grab the flags with both hands, squeeze hard, and pull straight down. Some aspects of the techniques in this video sound obvious and easy to follow. However, when on the field, they feel counterintuitive to the players. So it takes practice to take what sounds right and convert it into what feels right during gameplay. Here are some common issues that players tend to struggle with when it comes to flag pulling, and this applies to players of all ages, not just young players. Problem 1. Taking bad angles. Defenders instinctively run directly at the player they want to stop. This usually puts them into chase mode because they end up right at the side of the player or behind the player and have to give chase. This is problematic because if you don't get in the runner's way, they're probably running at top speed by the time you catch them. This gives the defender a much smaller chance and a more difficult window to grab the flag in. This is something that just takes coaching and practice to fix. Problem 2. Over-pursuing. 
even when a player heads off a rusher, they may get overzealous and over pursue. This means they run right past the ball carrier. This often manifests as the player getting in front of the ball carrier, squaring up, and then still making a break to one side of the runner in an attempt to grab one flag instead of maintaining discipline and position. To fix this problem, it takes more coaching and practice. Specifically, it requires reinforcement in trusting teammates. If nothing else, the first player to get to the ball carrier will always slow them down. They must trust that they are putting their teammates in a position to make the stop. A good drill for this would be designating one defender to head off the ball carrier. That defender is not allowed to reach for the flag. Instead, they must do everything they can to prevent the ball carrier from getting past them. This will teach them to have a more disciplined technique, as they won't have the opportunity to fall back on their flag-grabbing instinct. Instead, they'll be just trying to stay in front of the runner. Problem 3. Grabbing the end of the flag. Perhaps because the end of the flag waving wildly catches the eye of the defenders more easily, they tend to grab for it way down low. The problem is, this tends to put them in a very poor position, because they now have to bend forward and reach low. So when they miss, they have to recover their balance, turn, and then chase the ball carrier who, by this point, is easily another 10 yards downfield. Maintaining proper position can help to recover and head off once more. Maintain strict adherence to proper flag pulling in games and at practice. Call out every player who does it wrong every single time. The only time it's okay to break this rule is when a player has absolutely no chance to head off the player and is making a last ditch effort to make the stop. Otherwise, it's proper form every time. Problem 4. Free for all. Players who are not properly disciplined ignore the teamwork aspect of football as soon as the ball is snapped. This results in players all trying to do things on their own and losing any possible advantage to stop the ball carrier. Often, it's combined with the effects of other problems I described, where multiple players will all take a poor angle on the ball carrier and end up in the same place on the field, leaving a wide open lane for the ball carrier to rush through. Always preach teamwork and trusting in teammates no matter what style of play you're putting together. Even the best player on the field doesn't stand a chance against the other team's entire offense, and it's important that they understand that. Encourage players to show leadership and communicate with other players by using commands such as cover the sidelines or watch the cutback to the middle. To practice these fundamental techniques, watch my next video on some great flag pulling drills that are sure to set your players up for flag pulling success.